I truly believe that it's never been a better time to be a creator with all the different platforms that exist and all the different ways right now to make money and build a business. And so we wanted to make a video to break all those down. And if you stay until the end, we're actually gonna give you our advice on how we would start if we were gonna be content creators right now. So like I see so many people saying this on social media and they're sending me notes on Twitter and Instagram. They're like, Reed, it's so daunting to become a creator. Everything is so oversaturated. Discoverability is bad. What, what would you say to that question? Because I know I've given this a lot of thought over the years and, and I think discoverability has never been better. But to me, it seems like a lot of the consumers and people I interact with on different social platforms, like they don't think that's true. I think... Uh, if you were trying to become a creator 10 years ago, uh, it was just completely the wild west. There was no playbooks. There was no, uh, mentors. There was no actual advice on how to do it. And I think we're finally at a point where, uh, if you find your niche, if you find what makes you unique, uh, it's never been a better time. How do you feel about it? Well, I mean, just you saying that. So 10 years ago, Okay, that, you know, YouTube. So even on YouTube, it, it had existed now for, you know, 10 years ago for what, five years, you had to go through a multi channel network to get ads. So you couldn't just apply for YPP, which is the YouTube partner program. That was it. Like, where else could you make money? Yeah, Justin TV wasn't really a thing yet. And now it's like, as you look at all these platforms, you have like Substack, Patreon, uh, even Facebook now is paying out. So, you know, 10 years ago, that didn't exist. And so I think, yes, I totally agree with people. YouTube is very oversaturated. There's a lot of content to consume, but there's so many other places um, for creators to go. Like, but I'm seeing so many people create funny five, 10 second videos on TikTok, where I would argue like discoverability is probably the best. We've seen so many people break out on TikTok that had no following anywhere else. And now they built these businesses just from that TikTok. Yeah. And, and not only that, there's just so many different ways to monetize. Like you, you were talking about the YouTube partner program and, uh, you know, AdSense and that world. There's now a million and one ways to monetize uh, if you if you really want to. Maybe we should just talk through like what monetization looks like right now, because that entire landscape has changed. Yeah. Well, let's just start just with one. Let's just start with YouTube. And, you know, 10 years ago, it was just AdSense. And even then, like really hard to make significant money on AdSense. But today, YouTube has this entire alternative monetization program where it's like they have memberships, which is like very similar to you know what Twitch does. They have super chats where people can donate when you're live streaming. They have like now these like little emotes and bits and things that you can also you know donate as people are live streaming. What am I forgetting? I know I know they have a few more, and they're they're gonna there's there's I mean. You can, I think they like allow you to embed actually selling merch or, or tickets. You're right. Uh, they have a merch well. shelf. Yep. Yep. And, and so I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, obviously there's also brand deals, which, you know, YouTube uh, isn't necessarily directly facilitating, but YouTube. Well, they, they actually do. So they, they have an oh, internal really? agency called Brand Connect. So I don't know if people remember, but they bought a company called FameBit about mm, three yes. to four years ago. And they transitioned FameBit into what they now call Brand Connect internally. And so they do facilitate a lot of deals, direct deals mm -hmm. to creators. And we're seeing so many brands enter the market. Uh, Jimmy, for example, like we just did a Coinbase deal yesterday on one of his videos. This is like Coinbase's first YouTube integration. Um, and they're going to work. I know like they're going to work with a lot of creators over the next two, three years. And so is every probably crypto native company. And so there's just a lot more opportunity on that side on YouTube. I, I, I think there's been tons of narrative over time for brand deals of like whether these are successful or good or whatever but i think it's clear at this point that it's one of the most effective ways to advertise you know depending on what your your goals are mm -hmm. yeah and it's also like this is a totally separate conversation but it's 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 expanding i i think it, like i never hear people talk about some of these because the creator ecosystem i think people are like yeah it's instagram TikTok, youtube twitch right they don't understand like how big this actually is. Like in the ones that I don't hear people talk about a lot, but I see ads for like Skillshare, people yep. are building massive, creators are building massive businesses on Skillshare, Teachable. I think I sent you a, a few tweets yep. earlier today about, yep. you know, what you, the biggest person on Teachable, I can't remember what that number was, but they're doing I think it was 30 million well. a year. In 30 million a year. The, this yeah. is the biggest creator on Teachable right now. And the one interesting one I think is Twitter. And this is the one you're most active on. 
I think they called it super followers. Was that how they were going to monetize? Yeah, they, they, I think they actually rolled it out today uh, that they're going to allow you to you know, basically be in the equivalent of a close friends list uh, of Snapchat or Instagram uh, where you pay X dollars per month to be in their you know, exclusive group and maybe see uh, tweets that they wouldn't normally put on their timeline. That will be really interesting to see. Uh, I, I, I think it, it probably matches up well with, with Substack, which is you know another company that we've mentioned very briefly. But Substack is paid newsletters and building out a newsletter business. And I think people would be truly amazed at how much money uh, and how big these newsletters can be. Uh, like there's, it's, it's a very big industry, uh, you know, where the top newsletter creators are, you know, making millions of dollars a year. Um, mm -hmm. And, and it's just another type of creator. And, and so I, I think super follows probably touches on a similar type of user as, as like a Substack creator. Um, so it'll be interesting how that rolls out. I, I mean, the, honestly, the thread through all of this though, is that every one of these platforms really does need great creators. And so that's why I just continue to go back to like, there's going to be more like there's just more and more power accruing to the creators because you see these, you know, I, I mean, you, you see TikTok and Facebook and YouTube all advertising the amounts of money that they're paying out to creators to really try and incentivize you to like set up shop there and, and build on there and, uh, and start creating content there. And so I just think from like, it's never been a better time because every one of these platforms is really just fighting to get you to post there. Mm -hmm. So if you were, and I know this is a hard answer, you know, it's hard to answer this question. If you're like, hey, I wanna be, I wanna make videos, I'm funny, I'm a comedian, yep. or like I'm a video gamer, like where, where's the start right now? If it was me, I would start on TikTok 1000%. I, I, I would say the discoverability uh, on TikTok and, and your just ability to build like a top of funnel initial fan base is unmatched. And so from that, you would hope that you then you know, funnel it into YouTube or Instagram, uh, depending on you know where you want to evolve into. But I would say YouTube should hopefully be the end goal, and then you know that becomes the better place. And and the reason I say that is just YouTube, in in is much better for monetization. Uh, you know, you're just gonna like it's more sustainable if you end up growing a big audience on there. But yeah. I'm curious to get your thoughts. I, I mean, you you yeah. definitely have more experience here. Yeah, I and I actually agree with you, and that's how I would answer the question. I think the other caveat that I would add is. Figure out what your strategy on TikTok is because you know the viral loop. Like once a video that you post starts to take off, we, you and I have seen it. Like it goes from ten views to a hundred thousand to five hundred thousand. Like there's just there's never been a platform like that where you can just scale in views as quickly as, as possible with a new channel. Like someone yep. that like has only made two videos. So I think you start on TikTok. You make really good ten second, fifteen second videos. You know that are funny or engaging or hold people. And then I would also figure out how do you either repost or make other native content on YouTube shorts right now. That's okay. where I would start. Figure out your niche, figure out TikTok, figure out YouTube shorts. I mean, I think reels can be involved. I just, I still like, I don't know if, if you've seen yeah, anything. I, I really haven't seen anyone build like a business, like a, a sustainable business on Instagram yet. It's just a lot harder on Instagram yeah. right now than it is on those other two. I agree. I, I'm, I'm curious for you, as you think about like I, I'm sure you get tons of people like we talked about that ask like, hey, I want to start a channel. I want to do this. Like, what would your advice be to someone who's trying to start out and maybe they just haven't made the, the jump yet? Because there's like, oh, do I need to have a nice camera? Do I need to like find an editor? Do I need a thumbnail artist? Like, what do you think about all of that? Yeah, I'll, t I'll take this like because Jimmy actually answers this question quite a bit because he gets that, that, that uh, a lot. And so if people go back in Jimmy's catalog, he had the worst like laptop with no computer and he was using the 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 mic in the laptop terrible videos and and what he tells people is he's like your first 100 videos are going to be so terrible that it doesn't matter which what equipment you use they're just going to be bad you have to like figure out how to be a content creator how to produce videos like you're, you're better off figuring that out with not nice things than like buying ten thousand dollars worth of equipment and then figuring it out. And I think you and I, like we're lucky. We, uh, we've watched a lot of YouTube, we're, allowed, we're around a lot of creators and we just like wanna provide value to the community. Um, we're not trying to like build a massive business here. But if, if I was you know, starting out, I would just, just do it. Get started, 
don't worry about the equipment. You can use a Logitech webcam. It doesn't matter. You don't even need a webcam. A lot of people just do audio, like you call it smart YouTube. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people <laughs> just do like audio over moving pictures and yep. they have massive channels and they're interesting. And so I think half of the battle is just getting started. Half of the battle for you and I was just posting the first podcast. We talked about it for over a year and then yep. we were finally like, geez, like, let's just do it. And I remember you said, you're like, what camera do I need? And I was like, it doesn't matter. I was like, yep. just whatever can show your face. Like, it doesn't matter. We'll get to the nicer equipment. So that's, that's what I would tell people. You're just don't expect your, your first hundred videos are going to be good, but you're going to get better. So just focus on like, how can I continue to improve my content? Yeah. I mean, I would also say like, there's this other fear I think for people of like, Oh, what if people don't like the content I'm, I'm you know, making? The harsh reality mm -hmm. is that like your first hundred videos, like probably aren't going to get a lot of views, like you know, um, and, and and that's okay. Like that's that's part of the process. I would say, you know, you shouldn't assume that you're just going to get a ton of views, uh, and and you know, you should probably go into it of, like no one's going to watch this, uh, but and, and be pleasantly surprised if you do get views. Uh, but that's okay. Like you're, it's going to take time. Also, don't don't worry about audience. Yes. People think they need to pull millions of views a video. I know so many creators that only pull 10, 15, maybe 50,000 views a video that have huge businesses. And they're like in little niche categories that you would never think of. And so people need to stop worrying about like just views. It's actually not all about views. It's about yep. the quality of your viewers, not the quantity of your viewers. And so hopefully, yep. hopefully creators now like understand that better than ever, but it is really hard if you're trying to be a gaming creator, like, Hey, I'm going to go like, I want to be a Minecraft you know, creator or YouTuber, you're up against a lot of talented people. It's a hard space. So a lot of it too, is like also like picking the space. Um, and I think it's much easier to break out in little niche areas right now and not exactly like going after the, pl the things that are popping off like Minecraft. We're in, you know, a lot of people call this like creator economy. Like we're sort of in the attention economy more than anything else. So like there's all these different things that are fighting uh, to get your attention. So like even the fact that you are watching or listening to this podcast right now means that we did something right where you like chose to do this instead of, I don't know, whatever else you could possibly be doing right now. And I think it's important as a creator to just be like real of why would someone watch you over someone else, especially if you're doing Minecraft where it's like, why would they watch me over dream or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Really tough. Well, hopefully this was helpful. Blake and I kind of wanted to just do a, a video around like, it's never been better because we truly believe guys, it's never been better to start being a creator. And so hopefully this video just inspires one, maybe two people to get started in this industry because there's just a lot of platforms ready to support how you want to build your business and what area you want to build it in.